Okay, pre-calculus 12, let's get after it. Here's video number two on geometric sequences. So similar to an arithmetic sequence, we are going to have a list of terms, but these list of terms are going to be connected not now by a common difference, but a common ratio. And what does ratio mean? Ratio means division. Remember, a ratio, you know, one-third. That's a ratio one to three. So look here now at your list. It's two times three, six times three, uh, 18 times three. So if you take your term two this time and you divide it by your term one, or you take your term three and you divide it by your term two, you're now getting your common ratio. So for that first sequence, our common ratio is three. For the second sequence, we have negative 6 divided by 3, and then we have 12 divided by negative 6, and then we have negative 24 divided by 12. So we're dividing now. So our common ratio in this case, negative 2. So we have a ratio, not a difference. We are uh, multiplying from term to term, or we are dividing to get our ratio from term 2 to term 1, term 3 to term 2, so on and so forth. So subtle difference, but it changes our equation. It changes what we're working with. Now, here is the equation for a geometric sequence. Uh, in the notes in the workbook, there's just a little bit of a proof on how we come about that equation. Uh, I'm not going to dive into that here. This is going to be more of just how do we work with this equation. So it's, it's very similar to your arithmetic. Identify the information you have, and then it becomes a color by numbers scenario. So in this case, we want to know the 10th term, which means we want to know what T10 is. Not sure. We know then that N is 10 because it is our 10th term. And we know that A is 3 in this case. It's my first term. So all we need is, what's my ratio? Well, 12 over 3 is 4. 48 over 12 is 4. Looking good. Our common ratio, R, is 4. So from there, we just plug in. So Tn equals A to the power of R to the N minus 1. So the 10th term is equal to 3 times 4 to the 10 minus 1. T to the n is equal to 3 times 4 to the 9. And remember, we do our exponents first. So T to the n is equal to 3 times 262,144, which simplifies out to 786,432. See, so you can imagine, since it's a common ratio and since we're multiplying from term to term, our numbers get higher faster. So, boom, there you go. That's example one. Now, similar to that arithmetic sequence of finding, well, here's this term, here's this term, what's the first term? We did a little bit of subtraction to determine the common differences in between. We do a similar thing here. Okay, so what do we have? We have T4 equals 125. We have T9 equals 125 over 32. And we want to know what's T13. So in order to get T13, we're going to need A. We know N is going to be 13. So really, and we need R. Okay, and we need R. So we need a little bit of information here. So let's start by finding R. Now there's a fancy, fancy, helpful way of doing this here. Okay, so let's consider the fourth term is equal to a r to the 4 minus 1, which means the fourth term is equal to a r cubed. Okay? And then the ninth term is equal to a r to the 9 minus 1, which means nine, ninth term is equal to a r to the 8. So, here you have a r cubed, and here you have a r to the 8. And if there's a way to make these similar, then we can figure out the ratio difference in between them. Well, remember your exponent laws. If you have a common base, x to the a uh, times x to the b, you add the exponents. So if you already have an added exponent, you can break it apart. So technically, we could say, well, t9 is a r to the 3 times r to the 5. And what that does is that gives us here a value that is equal to the fourth term. So what we get is we get the ninth term is equal to the fourth term times r to the power of 5. So that's one way to do it. 
There's another way. I'm just going to show this one in this case. It's similar to our um, arithmetic sequence and the way we solved that one last time. But this is just an interesting little way to view exponents and bases. And we have a value for T4. It's 125. And we have a value for T9. It's 125 over 32. So we get this statement. And then we solve for R. So what we can do here is you have... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, the first thing you can do is write it down properly because the four sequence is not 32, it's 125. Because from there, what we do is uh, we're going to solve for r to the 5. So you divide 125 on both sides, which basically leaves you 1 over 32 equals r to the 5. Take the fifth root of both sides. And what do we get? We get that r is equal to 1 over 2. So we found our ratio, which is helpful. Now we can plug that ratio back in to solve for our a value, and we can solve it into either one of these. Uh, if we know that um, a r cubed is equal to 125, right, this, that's what that tells us right there, then now we know that a times 1 half cubed is 125, which means a times 1 eighth is 125. So A is 1,000. So now we have our A value, we have our R value, we have our N value. We can now use our equation, and we want T13 is equal to 1,000 times 1 over 2 to the power of N minus 1, so 12. And if you work that through in your calculator, you get that the 13th term is equal to 125 over 512. So we use a little bit of substitution. Uh, we use a little bit of exponent laws. We kind of pull back on all the things we've worked on over the course of our high school career to be able to work our way through this scenario. Uh, it's, I hesitate to say elegant, but it's quite nice the way everything ties together like that. And we can see how it really starts to make sense. Um, but I will uh, erase this left column here because I'd be remiss if I didn't show the other method. And it's just about how do you solve for R. So I'll just erase here and I'll show you R in the similar way that we solved um, for arithmetic. And consider the fact that we have nine terms minus four terms gives us five terms in between each other. But though in this time, in this, in this scenario, rather than do our ninth term minus our fourth term, we need to consider that we have to divide by um, our fourth term. Because if we do that, we end up with, um, it's not five times D. Remember, that's what we did with arithmetic now. That fifth term means R to the power of five. Because if you just think about this laid out, if I had my fourth term right here, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, my ninth term right here, right? I'm multiplying, 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 right? So repeated multiplication means exponents. And then this, this equation here is 125 over 32, then times, flip and multiply, 1 over 125, which again now gives us the 1 over 32, which allows us to simplify to 1 half. So obviously that's a lot faster and a lot more uh, intuitive perhaps, but the other method just shows you a little bit of work with substitution and exponent laws, and it's just a roundabout method of getting to the same place. And it's, it's helpful and it's important to be able to see things from different perspectives, but also try things using a different logical process, but one that is still in fact sound. So you have options, and there's two right there for you. Now, we'll do one more example, and we'll call it a day for geometric sequence. Similar to our um, arithmetic one, we have a scenario here where we have three terms, but written with respect to x. So we don't know what those terms are. We know those terms are in a geometric sequence. We need to determine then what value of x makes that accurate. So similar to arithmetic, we would take the second term and minus the first term. But in this case, we're going to take the second term and divide the first term to get r. 
We're going to take the third term. We're going to divide the second term. It's also going to give us R. So essentially what that tells us, they're both equal to each other, so we put them equal to one another. It says that, well, my second term divided by my first term, that ratio, has to be equal to my third term divided by my second term because that's what makes it a geometric sequence. So we have a rational equation that looks like this. And a lot of people would say, okay, great, now we just cross multiply. And although, yes, I do understand that, it kind of hurts my heart when people say cross multiply because then they start to cross multiply in scenarios that you're not supposed to, and they don't really understand why they're cross multiplying. I want you to consider that we're multiplying everything by the lowest common denominator. Because if you do that, you multiply this side by 2x plus 2 and x, and on this side, x and 2x plus 2. And then what happens? Well, the x cancels here with this x, and the 2x plus 2 cancels here with this 2x plus 2, right? And yes, essentially, we have cross-multiplied. But that is why you have cross-multiplied. So now we need to foil this one out, and we get 4x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 4. And then on this side, we just water bomb in the x. So we're going to get 3x squared plus 3x. Simplify the left side. And then we need to get everything on the same side of the equal sign in order to solve for x with an equation set to 0. So minus 3x squared and minus 3 and minus 3x squared and minus 3. So what do we get? We get x squared. Uh, plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. We factor that to x plus 1, x plus 4, and we get the answers x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 4. So we have two potential values for x, which means we're going to have two essentially starting points of our series. If x is negative 1, we have negative 1, and then think 2 times negative 1, negative 2 plus 2, we have 0. Nope. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That's going to cause us an issue, right? Because then after that, what do we have? We have uh, negative 3. Oh, look at that. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So look at that. When x is negative 1, you get a sequence that's going to be negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So uh, in reality, we would reject that because that's not much of a sequence, right? So now let's test negative 4 and see maybe we get a similar scenario. If x equals negative 4, we're now going to have negative 4 as our first term, and then negative 8 plus 2, negative 6, and then negative 12 plus 3 is uh, negative 9. So in this case, we actually get a true-to-form sequence that has a ratio, and it's a ratio of, well, 6 divided by 4 gives us 3 over 2, and... 9 divided by 6 gives us 3 over 2. So there we go. That one gives us a ratio value of 3 over 2. Uh, this, when x equals 1, we get a ratio essentially of 0. And that's not a ratio. Can't have a ratio of 0. So we'll reject x equals negative 1, and we'll take x equals negative 4. Both uh, answers work out algebraically for x, absolutely. But obviously, if we plug negative 1 into our equation, we're going to get a funky negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 sequence. So just be aware of that. Always nice to check your answers, see what kind of sequence you end up with, because you might end up with a situation like that. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I hope this helped. Again, if not, or you have any specific questions, please throw it in the comments. Let me know, and we can go from there. Uh, next video, we are going to look at geometric series. So again, similar to arithmetic, we are now going to be summing up a geometric series. Uh, some pretty funky stuff happens there, so be prepared uh, to have your mind blown in certain instances. Uh, it's pretty cool. All right, have a good one. See you next time.